Welcome to the Smith and Rowland Show. Let's join our host, Alan Smith and Jeff Rowland. Yeah. Welcome to the Smith and Rowland Show, everybody. Thank okay. you yes, for joining us. The Smith and Rowland Show, yes. where we look great, we speak eloquently. I don't know why you keep interrupting. And me. we become <laughs> the total I do a package. Job. <laughs> Jackson, he, he just runs you right off. He just the run me right off. <laughs> yep. His introductions is boring and dull, yeah. mundane. Well, that's, have no that's my, pers- my personality. How's everybody doing today? Good. Doing, doing good. Great. I will. will say that, yeah, I'm doing good, but man, my last nerve. I preached on you today. I you did. That? You did, did you? I did. I used you and? as an example of, I heard you use the statement, my, I saw my last nerve for, how long have I known you? 35 years? About that, yeah. 35 I've years. heard you use that for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, that math don't add. Yeah, that math does. don't add. I heard it before I met you. Well, and, uh, I mean, you know, true words have never been spoken. I well, I preached on left. that today, and I used you as an example. I have you know, yeah. Well, well and I did in not. A positive I light. did not throw you under the bus. You were the bus. <laughs> <laughs> you were the bus getting hit by the train. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this goes out to our <laughs> HR department. I repent. There's really, lots of things you should repent for. I probably. repent for losing all of my other nerves and remaining with just this last one. <laughs> I proved it. Now, don't ask mm-hmm. me how, but I proved it today. <laughs> when proved you're today. on your last nerve <laughs> and you make that statement that yeah. it calls all of the hordes of hell out to follow you and help you pull off whatever your last nerve is. See, let me tell you how wrong that is. That was so anointed. No, there was zero anointing in that for all of those. New Life, I apologize Uh that you had to hear that. Now, let me straighten things. We we have a... It is the hordes of hell that has got on my last nerve. Mm -hmm. See, that is... Yeah, that's right. On. They've gotten on it and they ride her like a donkey. The last nerve. You just had a stink bug land right on your jacket. Yeah, that's prophetic right there. Don't it over here. That's prophetic. <laughs> we just had, we it just, is. Y'all are throwing these bugs on me. <laughs> we just had a YouTube comment. Uh, Mr. Handy Mike said, Already. not a fan of HR departments. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'd like to introduce him to our HR department. He, I have would, so much fun getting on the HR's last nerve. I think that's. <laughs> I think your name is the last nerve of the, the HR department. Nerve. It is. They it do is. call me Jeff. Well, you, hashtag last nerve. <laughs> well, you guys ready for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> was he uh, talking to us? Let me. What, is wait, he talking hold, hold, to Smith hold on, and Watch this. Is he talking to uh, Haley? Am I ready for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when is, when is Christmas? He asked Smith and Roland if. Listen, we're always ready. When you for look Christmas. at me, I am in the Christmas spirit. I am. You say Christmas spirit. They use me on TV as a commercial. Yeah. Hashtag yeah, how's Christmas that? spirit. How's watch your Christmas this. tree looking this watch year? Watch this. I put my Christmas tree up on the first week of January and leave it up all year round. <laughs> oh. That's how prepared for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. So it's not up. See, what you're saying is it's not up yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you're saying. It's not January the 1st. Man, yet. I am not ready for Christmas as most of the secular world celebrates Christmas. I'm but ready for Christmas. on the spirit. You're not. Are you really? Yeah. Seriously, you already got Heather stuff? Done. I don't believe a word of that. Really? Done Done weeks ago. I'd have to see the proof of that before I'd... Well, I'm done with Frankie's. Yeah, but you don't get Francis nothing. I gave her me 51 years ago, and she looked at me and said, I need nothing else for Christmas. I heard that he wakes up on Christmas morning and, and sings that song, Last Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> The other day on our Unplug- Unplugged podcast, Alan started by singing I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. Mm-hmm. Viewership yes. took a nosedive. <laughs> no, all, the, no, I, all, yeah. all of our African-American people quit yeah, watching. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. Well, listen, tell them about how many contracts. Everybody's wanting me to sign a contract yeah. with all these music groups. Well, I will say that we are trying to contract Alan out, but we're getting no bites on it. Nothing's like, happening. I feel like Karen's probably texting Alan saying, I wish I would start talking about something. <laughs> <laughs> That's the HR department. <laughs> HR department. So what are we going to talk about today? Christmas. We're in the Christmas, Christmas season, ain't Christmas we? Christmas season. Yeah, Christmas. What good tidings do you bring, Jeff? There is an article on the stream 
which is part of the news feeds that's on the KingdomPropheticSociety.org. That's right, KingdomPropheticSociety.org. If you're not a member, then you can be a member. Costs you absolutely nothing, and all of my teachings is on there. You can get those teachings, and we'll talk about Alan's teachings later. But my picture is on there, Alan. Really? On the Kingdom Prophetic. Did you know that on the homepage? My picture's on there. I didn't know that. No. So uh, that should be enough to draw people there. But on the Kingdom Prophetic Society's news feeds, the stream has an article called A Merry Christmas, but it's M-A-R-Y Christmas. It's an article about the Virgin Mary. Is it good? Yeah, it's a good article. And I just want to say this in kicking it off, Alan, you know, there is, um, among those that are not Catholic... There is a controversy and a problem with those that are not Catholic thinking that Catholics pray to Mary. You know, that's right. always been a, a thing. But, the th- well, the thing about the Virgin Mary is she was highly favored of the Lord. There's no, just absolutely no denying that. Well, there's none. I'm, I mean, but I am too. I mean, where are you going with this? Well, that's my point. Mary was highly favored. And in this Christmas season, we celebrate the birth of Christ. I believe that all of those that are in Christ— are highly favored, but I do believe that Mary received an elevated overshadowing of the Lord to be no able doubt. to bring there's, forth. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, that would be hard. But at the same time, we do know that Mary carried Jesus and she birthed the Savior of the world. Yeah. But on the other hand, we now know, and I don't quite understand all this, that if you're born again, that it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. And so we're all in a, a type and a shadow of Mary. Absolutely. And that we're all carrying Jesus. Absolutely. And one thing that sticks out to me about that in this article, when the angel delivered the message to Mary that she would deliver Emmanuel in a fulfillment of Isaiah seven fourteen, he said, Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And the NIV translation says that Mary was greatly troubled. Yeah. At his words. Other translations use she was startled. She was disturbed. Get this one. She was thoroughly shaken. Right. That describes Mary's reaction. Can I just say that we're living in a Christmas season here where I, I would enjoy a little reverential fear coming our way over what Christ in us, the hope of glory, really means. Mm-hmm. If I had a Christmas present to, to give to those that would really change your life. It would be that, mm-hmm. that we take seriously those words and hear them, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Mm-hmm. I think that would be phenomenal. And so there's some parallels, just like you've drawn, between Mary and the believer concerning Mary's reaction. But it also comes with great responsibility. Can you imagine being visited by an angel and, and hearing the angel say, you're going to give birth to the Son of God. You're going to give birth to the Messiah. And then knowing the news later that the Christ child is going to be crucified. Well, the comparison to Jeff and Jason is when we share Christ with a non-believer, is that not birthing, a birthing of Christ in someone else? Yes. In other words, when we share Christ, we carry Christ just like Mary. Mary birthed Christ. But the question is, how do we birth Christ? And that's when someone else is born again. What about that? In other words, we carry the message, and then we give that message to someone else, and they're born again, and there again is the birthing of Christ and another person. And Mary wasn't perfect, and neither are we perfect. Right. And what made her perfect to carry the Son of God was His righteousness, not her righteousness. Let me ask you, how life-changing was it for Mary to receive that call? From the mm-hmm. angel that you're going, you're going to 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 bring forth a child, being a virgin. How life changing was it for her to receive that call at that time? And if you draw that same parallel, how life changing is it for all of us mm-hmm. to receive the same call, to have Christ in us, the hope of glory, and then to deliver that to the world around mm-hmm. us? Because that is the call, mm-hmm. and it should be a life changing call. It should be a reverential call. You know, I wonder how much, I don't know, I can use myself as an example, even though I do not encourage people to use herself as an example. How much am I really in touch with I am carrying Christ? Yeah. I texted a pastor this morning, and when in my text to him, I said, preach like hell's real. 
That's what I said to him. I said, preach like hell's real. <laughs> and I wonder if we Quit, preach was like... Was that this week that you That did was it? this morning. This morning you did. Yeah, this I morning said, I preached on a hypothetical of, uh, do you really believe there is a hell? Really? What if there was no hell was the hypothetical. And, and what I was mainly what I was doing was showing how that we come to the Word of God sometimes with our opinions and perspectives. Right. Then if you do that, You'll find Scripture. You know how the Word of God is living. You'll find Scripture to back up anything you want to believe. That's right. So if let's say, hypothetically speaking, you don't want to believe there's a hell. So you you go into the Word and you find Scripture like, God is not willing that any should perish. Mm -hmm. Well, that means that He has come to save the whole. And you get into that universalist mindset, but that's not truthful. Uh It's not truth. To preach like hell is real. Is what's that's, needed. That's what's needed. And I mean, I could stand in front of an alligator. I can see an alligator on TV, or I could stand in front of the alligator. And I promise you, my respect for an alligator that I'm standing in front of is much greater yes. than one that I watch on the screen. That's right. And I wonder if hell, I just, I can tell that I am not responding. The reason I, asked, I told that pastor, I said, well, just preach like hell is real. Yeah. And when we send there again, when we say Christ in you, the hope of glory, I mean, how much, how in touch are we that that's a true statement? So I'm how saying, aware? I mean, how yeah. aware are we? I mean, we celebrate Christmas, and uh, I think it's important. I think there's a lot of good reasons to celebrate Christ, Christmas. I know we can give, I can do as good a job as anybody on telling you all the pagan reasons. We mm-hmm. shouldn't enjoy Christmas, but I can, you know, just because they, you know, somebody's hauling pot or cocaine with a Ford pickup doesn't mean that all Ford pickups are bad either. So, you know, I think we can, to worship, I can get in the Christmas spirit somewhat, but I consciously have to make an effort to allow myself to go there. Mm -hmm. But when I do go there, it's a good feeling. Yeah. For some reason. I mean, mm-hmm. who, who who knows? You can say it, but the only thing I can tell you, it's a peaceful feeling. It's a good feeling Mm -hmm. to... You know, family can get together, friends get together. We the odd thing to me somewhat is the songs that are bring you into the Christmas spirit the most are the old ones. Yeah. You know, all the new ones are mm-hmm. well, they they might be twenty years old, but they still call them new, but they're they're just they don't quite have it. And I'm kinda reminded of when I go to church, for some reason old hymns do a lot for me too. But yeah. Nonetheless, it seems that a lot of there's something to be said for tradition. I know a lot of people are against tradition, but I think traditions are good things. Of course, you can have bad traditions, but I think there's good traditions, and I think we need to uphold them. Traditions of our country. I think Christmas is a good tradition. You can make it bad, I think. And so to capture the good things, I also mentioned today, Jeff, in in my teaching at church, I mentioned that there's a lot of bad going on around us, a lot of darkness right before the second coming of Christ. But also there's some very good news yeah, about the second yeah, coming absolutely. of Christ. Positive. And we're, we're to focus, we don't deny the darkness, but we focus on the good news. Same thing about Christmas. As Jews, Christmas is, is probably just a thorn in the flesh. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because right. they're not. Sure. What what would they do? You yeah. know, and I know they have other things they perhaps celebrate, but for the most part, we have a lot to celebrate. And the tradition of it's where I'm headed. Yeah. You know, with this past few years, we've tore down statues and mm-hmm. tried to get rid of every any good traditions that we have. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's part of what the enemy's trying to do. So, for my part, I think Christmas is a good time of year. Well, you bring up traditions and the scriptures teaches us to hold fast to that which is good there are some traditions that are good traditions that we're supposed to hold fast you go back in the old testament that's why jesus would or god would tell them he'd say build an altar here mm-hmm. remember this place over and over again I, there was one there's one past scripture says set up the old way marks and walk in the old paths mm-hmm. so there are some things that that some people call traditions necessarily traditionally bad. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. We, yes. we should hold to those things. I agree with you on the on the hymns. I think we're losing something that we don't need to lose. We, there's we a lot should of, cherish those things. There's a lot of good um, traditions. There. There's a lot of good traditions. Some traditions gets on my last nerve, but there's some good traditions. <laughs> I'll, I'll say I was teaching this morning one part of what I was saying was talking about the inspiration of the Word of God, the illumination factor of the Word of God and the revelation Mm -hmm. of the Word of God. And those are three deeper things. And, you know, inspiration is God breathed it out. For it to be illuminated 
is one thing. To get revelation is something completely different. Yeah. We talked a little bit about that. And I think that a lot of the, even the, like you're talking about with the Christmas spirit, I think in some ways it has to be revealed to you what the real meaning of Christmas is. And that's mm-hmm. sometimes something that's hard to even describe. We got a question online that I think we've got maybe a time to answer. And I think maybe one of you guys can probably answer it. Well, if it's a question, then I'm sure that you we might can probably answer pause. it. <laughs> I have a Christmas themed question. What is the significance of the spelling of Emmanuel in Isaiah, in Isaiah versus Emmanuel in the New Testament? And I will defer to uh, hmm. the, our I'm scholar. No, I right, say the question again, Jason. What is the significance of the spelling of Emmanuel with an I in Isaiah versus Emmanuel with an E in the New Testament? Do y'all, do y'all know? Yes, uh, one's an E and the other one's an I. <laughs> uh, well, it's in Scripture, it's just like Isaiah. The New Testament, they'll start to spell it with an E. In the Old yeah, Testament, it's, it's with an I. So The it's, meaning it's, is the same. It's the the same. meaning is the same in both, yeah, in both counts. Emmanuel, but the, from the Emmanuel. Hebrew to the Greek, suffixes and prefixes sometimes changes. Mm-hmm. And, and that would be the same. Th- that would be the same. Yeah. Isaiah, I think, would be your actually it's the same, right. same yeah. letters even. Absolutely. That's there a good, go. I do, that's a great question. I don't know who asked it, but thank well, it was you. Mr. Old at Heart. Old at heart. Old at now what that sounds like old at heart. Let me tell you something, boy. Old at heart does not have a last nerve. He has many nerves. <laughs> Listen, exactly. we could really have does. a podcast on old at heart. Old at heart. That's yeah. exactly. You know, he was probably actually going to be here next week. That's Is what he I really? Thought. I thought yeah. he was going to be here this week. Well, with all the all y'all's Stuff. things going on today. Didn't work out. Didn't work out. Okay, now can I just say that is one thing about the Christmas season that does get on my last nerve. What's, What's that? that? The busyness of everybody's schedule. See, that's a personal thing. You just got to fit yeah, everything in. He has all in. these personal problems. And let yeah. me tell you something. He tries you to did, bring into the watch, podcast. Jason. Hold it, hold it. I'm yeah. not finished with my thought. If you did a survey, people would agree with me. Too busy. I rest my case. Too busy? I'm right. Well, I'm okay you know with I'm too right. busy, but are you for it or against it? For busy or, or against too busy? Too busy. Now, wait a minute. Let me preface that. Yeah. I said, are you for it or against it? Uh, to all of our listeners from here to Hawaii, mm-hmm. Jeff Rowland is one of the most busiest men you'll ever meet. His wife is laughing tears right now. Probably so. At such a statement. Now, that's just a little caveat, a little parentheses, if you will, into the answer with such great provocation. I'll just say it this way. The mendaciousness <laughs> of your harsh <laughs> attitude is getting on my last nerve. No, uh, I do think we're too busy. Now, let me say this. I think you can be busy with good things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that's, like, uh, that's good. Handy Mike just said busy for the wrong reasons. Busy for the wrong reasons is not good. So I'm against busy for the wrong reasons. I am four. Yeah, but you were busy have, for the right. You wouldn't business. have a thing to do. I'd have to run that by HR. <laughs> yeah, I'd run that by HR. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But you know what, Alan? Short sure yeah, enough. Yeah, I don't uh, know what you're talking about. In the um, the busyness of this day's Jeff, I said there's something I said this morning also going along with that line, and that is when it comes to I know we're in a busy time in a busy world, but I'll be honest with you, I, right or wrong, what I suggested this morning was the people of God. I don't think need to slow down. Oh no, I think we, we need can't. to speed up. Yeah, absolutely. I think we need to be running faster than totally the enemy. Agree. I completely. Our game agree. plans need to be ahead of him. Yeah. I mean, everybody says, "Well, let's 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 slow her back a little. Let's pull her let's back. Coast. Let's rest. Let's coast." I'm like, "We're getting r- we're, we're getting steamrolled now." Yeah, that's you right. Know what I'm saying I, I, yeah. so. I do have a. Um, uh, and I know you feel that way. I, I absolutely feel that way. John Hagee preached years ago, and it's when he did, I, I studied it out as best I could. He made this statement, and when he did, it caught my attention. He said, if you're working less than 72 hours a week, yeah, you're already semi-retired. That's what he said. And I, and, uh, I got to looking at that, and he backed it up with Scripture. Six days God's given us to work, not mm-hmm. five, mm-hmm. six. On the seventh, you rest. And, that, I mean, that's God's plan, and we know – if you go back into the Old Testament scriptures and follow it on through, let me tell you, we have gotten lazier and lazier by the minute. And now we're living in this time where everybody say, okay, can I just say this gets on my last nerve? Go, here. go for it. This gets on my last nerve. When someone prefaces what they say by, God wouldn't expect me to. I just cannot go there. Because watch this. The expectations of God is far greater. Oh, yeah. 
than what we have ever imagined. Mm -hmm. And I'm reminded of an episode in The Chosen uh, where Jesus was speaking to a guy, I may have mentioned this before, he said this, he said, I require nothing of those who do not follow me. That's right. I require a lot Mm -hmm. of those who do. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm just saying that I'm in total agreement with you that the people of the kingdom need to be busy about the Father's business. Well, we're getting steamrolled right now. So Old at Heart just commented, and he said, sarcasm incoming. I wasn't there today because it was raining. Apparently, that's a good enough reason to miss church. (laughs) (laughs) I really like old at heart. (laughs) Yeah, he's one of us. Yeah, he really is. He is. He. I really like old at heart. (laughs) Well, he just says a few words and says a lot. I'll just say this: he's a man after my own heart. (laughs) Yeah, old at heart. That's right. Yeah, it is a busy time, and I, I am not. I'll just say say this. I think that we ought to be busy about the right things. Mm -hmm. Anything that has to do with the kingdom, I'm all for. Hey, just go for it. Sell out. Do whatever we can for kingdom benefit. But some of the hustle and bustle around this season, I think, is not necessary. Well, let me ask you this, not to get off topic too much, but I like to fight hell like it's real, okay? Yeah. Uh, We have a lot of people on the Internet today just trying to tear down other believers, guilty and innocent. I don't care yeah, which. Right. It's more like a self-righteous, I can I say? Yeah. Like a self-righteousness. And if we do anything, at, part of me, the spirit of Christmas, is we're doing the spirit of Christ. And the spirit yeah. of Christ is the spirit of forgiveness. Absolutely. It is the spirit let's of, get into of that giving. Spirit. And let's get into the spirit of loving each other when we fail. Come yeah, on, absolutely. Come on now. I mean, I mean that's the listen, message listen, of the book. Jeff, that would keep us all busy 24-7. Come on, know, somebody. I, I mean, it's like everybody, we've got people criticizing people mm-hmm. for their failures, like that's something new. Even after they're dead. Even after they're, oh, don't get me started. I, you know, I'm about to ruin your Christmas no, spirit. Yeah, you're about to ruin the thing, Christmas But the spirit. thing, you're exactly right. Should we not be about loving and forgiving one another? Mm-hmm. I got to be a part of something this past week that just was so refreshing to me. It was diversity. And we got to talk openly with uh, some other believers in the same room. Well, let me just put it this way. There was a diverse room of beliefs But the thing we shared in common was the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus, his sinless life, his death on the cross, his burial, and his resurrection. We agreed on those common grounds. There was different spiritual personalities in that room. The way that we related was just, you knew it had to be God. I do get weary of, Al, there's some podcasts out there that their entire podcast is about sharing what someone else said and then critiquing it. I I don't find that as a gift in the body. No, that's not enjoyable. Do you see this article, A Merry Christmas, that we're looking at? Yeah. You see that, Jay? I do not have it pulled up. You do not have it pulled up. I I told him to pull it up a long time ago. I'm not plugged up. I have it pulled up. You have it pulled up, Jeff? Mm -hmm. If you look to the right of that article, the third one down, it'll say, Celebrating Christmas While Doubting Christ's Existence. That one's interesting to me while we're talking about Christmas here. The title of this article is Celebrating Christmas While Doubting Christ's Christ existence. Mm-hmm. Now, that's the reason it gets into that statement, like I said, preach against hell like it's real. One reason it's hard for people to preach Christ is because the truth is, I think they're still battling the very existence of Christ. Don't you find it ironic that people even celebrate Christmas well, if they don't believe if they don't the existence think of Christ? Well, look at that article, um, Jeff. <clears throat> Look at that first paragraph. While most Americans still believe that Jesus was a historical figure, whether they recognize him as the Son of God or not, there is a small percentage who doubt his existence, but celebrate celebrate Christmas anyway. A recent LifeWay survey found that around 27% of the U.S. population either doesn't believe Jesus was a historical figure or are not sure what to believe. However, that doesn't prevent most of them from at least participating in secular aspects of the holiday Named after Christ. Now watch this. There is a growing online movement called Jesus Mysticism, claiming that Jesus never existed. Claire, I mean, that's in the church, isn't it? Uh, (laughs) Most academics discount it, but it has uh, seen the growing support of skeptical atheists. Yeah. Can I ask you what you what, what do you believe about atheists? Do you believe the premise of being an atheist says there that there is no god. Do you buy into s- someone who claims to to be an atheist? I, I, well, an atheist I guess is saying that everything was created uh, by nothing. 
so to speak. Right. right? Yeah. We're a creationist, so we believe that God created the heavens and the earth. Mm-hmm. An atheist is saying, I'm assuming, there's nothing there. God's not there. Nothing's there. If nothing's there, nothing sure did a pretty good job creating everything. When you get to the premise of what they're, I, I'm assuming they believe in the Big Bang Theory that created a universe that could life could inhabit and then life evolved over right. time into who we are. I'm assuming that's the only plausible conclusion you could come to if you are if you say you're an atheist, right. which takes a whole lot more faith. <laughs> well, it doesn't even follow logic, which no. most atheists say. I mean, if you have a painting on the wall, would you not say there was a painter that painted it? Exactly. If there's a house, when you you see a house, would you not have to say someone had to build that house? Mm-hmm. I mean, right. So and, and I'm not all logic that, says. Right. I'm not saying that atheists are not intellectual. But it really takes most of those, even in the academic world, will concede that there has there has to be a God. This is by intelligent design that we are here. Most even in the academic world mm-hmm. that that don't maybe adhere to the writings of Scripture still be you know they they conclude there has to be a God. Well, there's some do, and then there's some. Well, there's some that don't. Of course, I know, now, me but, and you but, are act, we are actually experts on the academic world. I don't know anything really that I'm not an expert on. <laughs> I mean, all the great men are dead, men. You ain't feeling so hot yourself. <laughs> but it's ironic to me. Mm-hmm. That, that you can have, I guess this is even more ironic, that you've got atheists that celebrate Christmas. Well, I mean, that's what they're saying. Christians can no longer assume that their non-believing friends are on the same page as them when it comes to the reality of Jesus, much less that he is the divine son of God. Yeah. So when talking about Jesus with skeptics, some basic information on the case for Christ's historical credentials may help them to see that, in fact, Jesus is real. And that's yeah. the reason I say, preach hell Preach against hell like it's real. Yeah, boy. I say preach That's, Jesus like it's real. And preach Christmas like it's real. And preach Christmas like it's real. Yeah. I think that's the, the, joy. the deal. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I think that's that's the deal. And and I got to tell you, if you're going to celebrate Christmas, Alan, you hit on something that I don't think we can go away from. And I, we're that? running out of time, I know here, or I am. But yeah. let, let me just, I do want to say this. During this Christmas season, I would just like to challenge every believer that's out there. Yeah. Give the gift of forgiveness. That doesn't mean it's easy. Now, as a matter of fact, if God's requiring you to forgive, it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done most it of the is. time. It is. It is. But that's what we believe. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness, grace. Give the gift of mercy. Give the gift of grace. Be a vessel, a conduit of the forgiveness of the Lord to flow to others. Hardest thing you'll ever do, the most sacrificial gift you'll ever give, but I think that is is the embodiment of the Christmas spirit. And if we're going to be busy about something, let's be busy about preparing this vessel so that can flow out of it. And so you're saying the kind of forgiveness you're speaking of, I'm assuming, is forgiveness that can only come out of the kingdom of God. Yes, And that And that forgiveness means that the sin can only be paid for by the blood of Christ. Yes, yes. And that you're not requiring that individual that sinned against you. Yes. To pay for it. That's right. That's, that's, right. that's, pretty, that's, pretty, that's big. pretty big mouthful right That's there. big. If we but could it is possible. That, if we could wrap that and put it under the tree, he'd change you'd the change world. would change the world. That's exactly right. It'd change the world. Amen. Yeah. Okay, Big J. There you go. I think we ended up at the right spot. We got everybody out of hell. Yes, we did. Heaven. And with the Christmas spirit. I got one little thought. Yeah, for it. For to end it, to end us up with. This is a little story from uh, my cousin, actually, his little five-year-old. Ah. This was when he was getting him out of bed the other morning. His little boy asked him, Daddy, what is Christmas spelled backwards? And oh. he said, his dad said, something unpronounceable. And his little five-year-old says, doesn't mas mean more in Spanish? He said, yes, it does. So if you say it backwards, mas Christ, it means more Christ. Mm, wow. <laughs> that's, there you go. That's, that's Christmas from a five-year-old. There you that's go. Good. I'll, I'll, go, I'll take it. Yeah, well, All right. One of you guys want to pray for us and send us out of here? Father, we love you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came to this earth and you died for us. But you didn't just die for us. You lived for us. And, Lord, that's so wonderful and so precious. Now, Lord, we pray that we'll come into the full awareness of Christ 
in us the hope of glory. Amen. And may this Christmas season be filled with love, joy, forgiveness, grace, mercy, peace, and all of the fruits of the Spirit. May we be vessels of that to others. Lord, we believe in the word that Alan, you gave Alan the other week. I'm praying that before Christmas, there'd be peace in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Make that a Christmas gift to the people of your land. We give you praise, God, and we honor you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All Thank right, you guys. see you guys next week. See you. Thank you for joining today's Smith & Rowland Show. You can check out our website at kingdompropheticsociety.org and our daily unplugged podcast at smithandrollandshow.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.